I think I'd like to learn how to draw. Really draw. I see other people who are able to observe something or imagine something and then take a piece of paper and accurately depict that thing. And I think, it's like magic. How do they do that? I want to do that. But why? The world is full of drawings and people who can draw better than I would ever be able to draw. I could spend every hour of every day of my life looking at other people's drawings and never scratch the surface of the mass of drawings already out there in the world. Why add to that pile? What could I possibly have to contribute? I think there are good answers to this question of why. Let's start by looking at a book by Alain de Baton called The Art of Travel. Toward the end of the book, de Baton discusses the desire of the traveler to possess and hold on to the beauty that they encounter while they're traveling. He notes that many people attempt to satisfy this desire to hold on to that beauty by taking photos. But the better way is to draw what we see. De Baton credits John Rushkin as the most outspoken champion of the value that learning to draw can offer to anyone willing to try it. Here's a passage from Rushkin De Baton quotes in his book. Let two persons go out for a walk, the one a good sketcher, the other having no taste of the kind. Let them go down a green lane. There will be a great difference in the scene as perceived by the two individuals. The one will see a lane and trees. He will perceive the trees to be green, though he will think nothing about it. He will see that the sun shines and that it has a cheerful effect, and that's all. But what will the sketcher see? His eye is accustomed to search into the cause of beauty and penetrate the minutest parts of loveliness. He looks up and observes how the showery and subdivided sunshine comes sprinkled down among the gleaming leaves overhead till the air is filled with the emerald light. He will see here and there a bough emerging from the veil of leaves. He will see the jewel brightness of the emerald moss and the variegated and fantastic lichens, white and blue, purple and red, all mellowed and mingled into a single garment of beauty. Then come the cavernous trunks and the twisted roots that grasp their snake-like coils at the steep bank, whose turfy slope is inlaid with flowers of a thousand dyes. Is not this worth seeing? Yet if you are not a sketcher, you will pass along the green lane, and when you come home again, have nothing to say or think about it, but that you went down such and such a lane. I believe, Rushkin, and I want to learn to see the world around me more clearly. So this desire to learn to draw is not about wanting to add to the immeasurable pile of perfectly wonderful art already out there in the world. It's about wanting to increase my ability to see. If I'm able, eventually to create something that brings others a bit of pleasure, that's just gravy. On top of that, consider what renowned art educator Dr. Betty Edwards, who has sold millions of copies of her book, Drawing on the Right Side of the Brain, has to say about the benefits of learning to draw. Just as learning basic reading is a vitally important goal because the skills of reading transfer to every other kind of learning, from math and science to philosophy and astronomy, I believe that in time, learning to draw will emerge as an equally vital skill one that provides equally transferable powers of perception to guide and promote insight into the meaning of visual and verbal information. I will even go out on a limb and say that we mistakenly may have been putting all our educational eggs into one basket only while shortchanging other truly valuable capabilities of the human brain, namely perception, intuition, imagination, and creativity. Now these sentiments seem like they could apply to many creative endeavors. Why write a book? Why write a song? Why make a video? There are some people whose genius is irrepressible, and to stop them from creating would be to deny humanity a portion of the treasures that make life worth living. But for most of us, the creation mostly benefits the creator, but nevertheless adds some tiny amount to the sum total of goodness in the world as the creator improves his or her craft. If I'm convinced that learning to draw is good for me, and probably not bad for the world, the next question that follows is whether drawing is something I can actually become proficient at in the amount of time I have to devote to the endeavor. I'm not so young anymore, and I have a job and numerous other responsibilities that take up much of my day. On top of that, I have never shown any natural artistic talent. So will a limited investment of time in trying to learn to draw be, in fact, not really an investment, but just a waste of time? Here's what Dr. Bennett has to say about that. I firmly believe that given good instruction, Drawing is a skill that can be learned by every normal person with an average eyesight and average eye-hand coordination. 
Someone with sufficient ability, for example, to sign a receipt or to type out an email or text message can learn to draw. And she's not alone. Urshad Karim, who has created a hugely popular online drawing instruction course, believes that drawing is a teachable skill, not an inborn trait. Here's what he has to say about the same matter. Anyone can learn to draw. It's not some magical talent a few people are born with. It's a skill you can train. I'm going to choose to believe Rushkin and Bennett and Kareem. After all, the stakes here are pretty low. If I spend, say, six months trying to learn how to draw, spending 30 to 60 minutes a day on the endeavor, and at the end I'm still nowhere near confidence, what have I lost? The time I spent trying to learn would probably have otherwise been spent watching TV. And even if I don't gain a new skill, I will be a bit wiser. If I end up being even partially successful, I'll have a skill and a hobby that can stay with me for the rest of my life, however long or short that may be. Okay, I've talked myself into giving this a try. So why make videos about it? If I'm honest, I'm doing it as a bid for validation, encouragement, and advice. That's a bit silly since there's a good chance that few will ever watch this video or any others that I cast into the void. That said, the structure and discipline of putting out videos of my progress, or lack thereof, will keep me going, I hope. Even if no one is watching, maybe I can look back after a while and see how far I've come. That would be nice. So if fate somehow puts this video in front of you and you've somehow managed to watch to the end, and by some miracle feel the urge to try learning to draw too, I'd love to hear what you think.